Hi, uh, today I will be speaking about the story of Winston. And the Winston story begins with his Revolut account being closed. And well, he's quite concerned. He goes to the internet to ask about like, what the hell, what's, what's happening? And he finds out that this is actually not that unusual, that it happens quite often with the various reasons. And uh, he really doesn't get it because well, basically every, all that he has done is that he used it for transactions. So uh, this story has, well, unfortunate uh, downside and that's that Winston thinks that he bought Bitcoin, that he bought Bitcoin on, uh, on this Revolut account. And he finds out that it's uh, quite hard to withdraw it to an exchange or to a hardware wallet. So he goes to Facebook, to this like Bitcoin community, to get laughed at. Uh, and well, of course, there is one. There is this one guy who is like, look, if you just use an intermediary company, well, you wouldn't have this problem. Winston knows that this is probably not the way because, well, he's been there. He already <laughs> tried to use such company. And he really wants to buy Bitcoin, not numbers on a screen. So he has an idea. Everyone in this Bitcoin community is basically shilling some referral codes for various centralized exchanges. So he goes there, he logs in, and then he gets quite surprised. Uh, and he's surprised because of the amount of the information that the exchange is asking him to provide. And, well, Winston thinks, well, it shouldn't be like that because, well, he's buying Bitcoin on an island. Uh, but he goes through it. He goes back and forth. He uploads all kind of private info that he can think of. He uploads utility bills and other utility bills. And in the end, he actually successfully buys Bitcoin. But what happens next? His bank account is closed. And he doesn't get it. Like, first Revolut, now his bank account. So he's asking them, like, what the hell? And they're, like, basically singing the same song all the time. Well, we can close the bank account. It's like internal guidelines, blah, blah, blah. And it's not only one bank. Soon, uh, other banks follow. And he goes back to the Bitcoin community on Facebook just to find out that it's probably because he used uh, fame, uh, description of the payment, the payment reference, and he wrote there it's for Bitcoin. And again, there is this another guy telling him, like, look, you should have just used decentralized exchange. Uh, exchange. This would have never happened. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like something for me. Why not? So he goes there just to be immediately, immediately quite surprised because when he looks at the tool, he is like, what is this? I cannot use it. <laughs> but he's very dedicated. He really wants to buy his Bitcoin. He goes to YouTube. He searches for this two hour long tutorial just to find out after one hour that he already has to have some Bitcoin in order to be able to buy Bitcoin. And he's like, okay, I've come so far. I can do this. And look, Winston is living in the border of Czechia and Slovakia and he's thinking like, oh yeah, Bratislava is just around the corner. I'm going there. I can use the ATM. No problem. I will buy that Bitcoin. No matter that I have to drive for 50 kilometers, whatever. I'm going through this, I'm getting, I'm getting Bitcoin. He comes to Bratislava, he goes into the shopping mall, and the ATM is getting closer and closer and closer. And well, he came just in time to find out that he won't buy any Bitcoin. And the reason is, quite recently, the provider of that service left the Slovak market because of the dilatant regulation of the Slovak Republic. I was thinking like, okay, this is just one ATM. There are many several, there are uh, many shopping centers. Uh, there are many ATMs. I can go to another. And he finds out that well, even 
another provider already left the market, still better, it, it actually makes more sense for him to leave the market and try to operate within the realm of the regulation. Flybyistan does not give up, and he decides to drive to Brno, back to Czech Republic, because he finds out, and this time he looks, before, uh, looks, up, uh, look, looks it up before, that uh, there are still operational ATMs in Czech Republic. And uh, it's the same story, another shopping mall, another ATM, and he really puts the money inside, and he's waiting, and just to find out that he has to pay like five euros and like outrageous fees. Ah, uh, and by this time, if you take into account all the costs of time and all the costs of driving and all the costs of the ATM, he's probably buying the most expensive Bitcoin in, in the history. And he, it has interesting side effects. This thing gets an email from Financial Intelligence Office that is saying like, oh, Winston, we look, we see that you made some profit on Revolut, please pay taxes, thank you. And then he gets another message from his friend saying, well, a friend of a friend told me that you were trying to buy some Bitcoin. And he's like, what? what, what? How come everyone knows about me buying Bitcoin now? He is quite concerned. Well, it's Bitcoin again. It should be as easy as buying something on a flea market. And I think we've all been Winston once on our journey towards our first Bitcoin. We all were in the place when we wish that we could buy Bitcoin from, from a friend, a friend of a friend. And we didn't have the choice, we didn't have the option, we didn't have the tool. Until today, because from today on, you can download Vexel. You can anonymously import your contact list and access a marketplace where you will see offers from your contacts and contacts of your contacts and all in a private matter, uh, manner but not even service provider would find out what you're doing there and why. Uh, you can find an offer you like, you can request it and open and enter an encrypted chat to agree upon the deal. And if you are not sure about the identity of the counterparty, you can ask them to reveal themselves. Vexel, discrete Bitcoin, peer-to-peer -peer and without KYC, as it was intended. I'm going to leave you with the final word uh, by me, Satoshi Labs, and Satoshi Nakamoto. It might make sense just to get some in case it catches on 